Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. In recent years, a profound development has been unfolding in astrophysics. The inevitable acknowledgement of tremendous electric currents at the largest cosmic scales. One of the most stupendous electromagnetic cosmic phenomena is the collimated, light-years-long jets produced at active galactic nuclei. Recently, the obvious electrical nature of these jets has been explored in scientific papers, published in peer-reviewed journals. One such paper, entitled The Jets of Active Galactic Nuclei as Giant Coaxial Cables, summarizes. Our results have now yielded firm evidence that many, possibly all, active galactic nuclei jets have inward currents along their axes and outward currents in more extended regions surrounding the jets. It also indicates that astrophysical jets are fundamentally electromagnetic structures. Another paper, entitled Electric Currents Along Astrophysical Jets, also argues for cosmic scale electric currents, though also doing so from the framework of gravitational theory. The author states, Several researchers have reported direct evidence for large scale electric currents along astrophysical jets. Quite unexpectedly, their directions are not random, as would have been the case if the magnetic field were generated by a magnetohydrodynamic dynamo. Instead, in all kiloparsec scale detections, the inferred electric currents are found to flow away from the galactic nucleus. This unexpected break of symmetry suggests that a battery mechanism is operating around the central black hole. And here we see emphasized the fundamental differences between standard astrophysical theory and plasma cosmology and the electric universe. Astrophysicists can only imagine colossal gravity, a black hole, producing tremendous magnetism, which then produces the stupendous electric currents. In this episode, retired professor of electrical engineering Donald Scott offers the electric universe interpretation, first addressing a basic problem in cosmology. What is the real source of magnetism in space? We have to realize that magnetic fields are caused by one thing and one thing only. And that's the movement of charge. In other words, electric currents. Electric currents create magnetic fields. And when magnetic fields collide with conductors, uh, then currents will be induced, that is to say, initiated, created in those conductors. You can't have one without the other. But anyway, they've been very reluctant to, to mention electric currents until very, very recently, where they do indeed mention electric currents. So uh, one was uh, electric currents along astrophysical jets by Ioannis uh, Kantopoulos. When I saw this, we were all like, wow, electric currents in jets. That sounds just like Birkeland currents. Until you begin to read the article, and um, I, I do admit they do mention electric currents, so that's, that's two points to windward, and that's good. But I think it's the first sentence in the article. Astrophysical black holes and their surrounding accretion disks are believed to be threaded by grand design helical magnetic fields. There is strong theoretical evidence. Now, I don't know what strong theoretical evidence means. There's either strong observational evidence or a well-believed theory, but there's not just there's this thing as strong theoretical evidence. But the main driver of their winds and jets is the Lorentz force generated by these fields and their associated electric currents. So that's good. The Lorentz forces certainly are at play in Birkeland currents. And then they go on, they said several researchers have reported direct evidence for large-scale electric currents along astrophysical jets. Good. Quite unexpectedly, their directions are not random, as would have been the case if the magnetic field were generated by a magnetohydrodynamic dynamo. Uh oh There we go again. Dynamos. Um, if you look up the definition of, of dynamo in uh, Wikipedia, and I did it just, just to be sure I was right, a dynamo is an electrical generator that produces direct current. In other words, it's a DC generator. It's the way Edison made DC current in, in Chicago, I think it was. But it has nothing to do really with uh, what's going on in, in space. I don't think we really have any use for dynamos, but they, they use this word almost like a magic shibboleth that uh, it's a dynamo caused it. Anyway, magnetic fields are an important constituent of cosmic plasmas at all astrophysical scales. They are thought to be produced by seed fields 
generated by random currents that are amplified by dynamo action in planetary and stellar interiors, accretion disks, and generally rotating astrophysical plasmas. I mean, other than the fact that there are, they mention astrophysical plasma, everything there is, is wrong or non-existent. There's no such thing as an accretion disk. They like to think about it. It's well known that Tony Peratt said that in uh, Los Alamos uh, laboratory, they would, would try to simulate an accretion disk and totally failed miserably. They couldn't do it. And if they mixed plasma in with their simulation and uh, allowed for the Maxwell's equations to be used as well, then yes, you could get the thing to accrete. But without plasma, without electricity, there's no such thing as a magnetic accretion disk. But anyway, there's another paper, which I think is, is less obviously wrong in many of its points, but still has some things to worry about. That one is the jets of AGNs, active galactic nuclei, as giant coaxial cables. This paper was written by Denise Gabuzda and her associate authors, Nagel and Roach, from the Department of Physics of University College, Cork, Ireland. And the first sentence in that paper is, active galactic nuclei, AGNs, release vast amounts of energy, whose ultimate source is a supermassive black hole in the galactic nucleus, in so-called radio loud AGNs. Remember that radio loud, uh, that's important. Radio loud a AGNs, two relativistic jets of plasma emanate from the, pl from the nucleus, presumably along the rotational axis of the black hole. In other words, they can't let go of black holes and gravity and all this other nonsense when the evidence is right in front of their face, uh, they, she says radio loud AGNs. What makes loud radio noise? Answer, double layers. That's, that's been well known for, for decades since Hannes Alfian won the Nobel Prize in 1970. Let me just conclude by saying in the end of that paper by Gabuzda, uh, her figure two is almost a, an identical figure to one that I published in my paper uh, on, in Progress in Physics in 2015. It's, it's a cross-section of the Birkeland current. It shows counter-rotating uh, currents and, and magnetic fields, and that's indeed true. So if she gets it that right, why can't she let go of the supermassive black holes? There's no excuse for anyone with any claim to being an investigator of, of, of cosmic phenomena not to know about the seminal plasma work of people like C.E.R. Bruce, Ralph Juergens, Earl Milton, Walt Thornhill, Tony Peratt, Hannes Alfian, Birkeland, and, and many others. These people have staked out their rightful claims years ago, and it's shameful that their work is being ignored as if they never had lived and worked for years to promote these concepts. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to Thunderbolts.info.